Welcome to Impact Data Books, How to Use a Data Book Tutorial. I am Tony and would like to use this video to help educate shooters on the importance of using a data book and how to analyze your book in order for you to get the most from it. But that being said, there isn't much written on how to use a data book effectively. And the only way to get any specific or formal training on using a data book is to either join the military, law enforcement, or while attending one of the precision rifle courses being taught around the country. So what I've decided to do by making this video is to try to provide some guidance to new and experienced shooters on how to fill out, log, and analyze the information that they put into their data books so that it can be used at a later date in order to increase your percentage of first round hits. What do I need in a data book? On a daily basis, I get multiple emails, calls, and messages from shooters that are getting their first data book. Most of the time, these calls contain the questions, what do I need in a data book and how do I use my data book once I have it? The first thing the shooter should ask yourself is what type of shooting do I plan to do? At what distances will I be shooting from? What type of targets do I have to shoot at? Where will I be using this book? By answering these questions, you can quickly lay out and design a book from us by choosing the pages that correspond with your shooting needs from the wide variety of target pages we offer. All our pre-made, spiral, and modular books come with the same index reference material. So what you need to determine is if you have specific needs to configure your book around. If so, then you will probably need one of our modular books. If you don't know exactly what you need or shoot at common shaped targets like circles, squares, and silhouettes, then one of our pre-made books will allow you to get started and will also allow you to add to it as your shooting needs grow or change. Let's talk about data collection details. When using the data book, you as a shooter will only get as much information from your data book as you put into it. What this means is the more details, facts, or factual bits of information you can accurately log into your book, the more patterns and mistakes you'll be able to understand and correct when you start to analyze your data book. The phrase garbage in, garbage out is a commonly used term when referring to data collection. By being harsh, precise, and objective to the information you log into your book, the more you will get out of it. If you just simply plot unrealistic, unfactual information, trying to analyze that information becomes worthless. Be precise, because you may be reviewing this information weeks or months down the road. The first thing that you should take place in any range session is to start off by recording your environmental conditions. This can be done in a few ways. You can grab this information off your local news channel, newspaper, or internet website. This will get you in the ballpark. I recommend that you try and record this information in real time on site by using one of the popular handheld weather wind stations made by Kestrel Weather Meters, as you see here. This is probably one of the most popular models out there. As you can see, our pages are laid out systematically with all the pertinent information that you need to record in order to refer back to at a later point. Simply plug in all the information with as much detail as possible. Once this is complete, we can now move into the calling and plotting of our shots. Let's talk about calling and plotting your shots. Our books are set up with 20 call, plot, call areas and one large plot area. So what we're gonna do is each time we take a shot in the corresponding call box, we're gonna go ahead and place a dot or a mark where we've seen our crosshairs when the gun went off. That's the call portion of it. The plot area is we're gonna systematically assign that number to that box to allow us to see where that shot actually went when we took the shot. This is gonna allow us to analyze this data later on during the analyzation phase. As you watch the video, you'll see that after I take the shot and complete my follow through, I then call a mark where I see the crosshairs when the weapon went off for that specific shot. I place a dot on the target in the area for that corresponding shot in the call area. I then look down range and find the impact on the target and I mark it on the large plot target section of the data book found at the right. This process is repeated for each and every shot that I take. Shot number one, the cold war shot. This was the first shot from my gun for that day. The round broke good, I called it center, but the impact was high and right, about an inch off the intended target at one o'clock.
shot two. I seen the sights drifting near the one o'clock position when the rifle went off. That was my call and the round did impact further right than the first shot. Shot three, felt good. I called it center, but the round impacted near shot number two. At this point, I have a group going and I can see it does not have the intended results I desired. So I decided to make a scope adjustment. Prior to shot number four, I marked the new sight adjustment in the elevation of windows box prior to taking the next shot. Shot number four, called at center and it struck my target just below right of center. Shot number five, called at center and it struck shot number four. Shot number six, called at center and it dropped right on top of shots four and five. I shot a nice group, but it is still a bit low and I want to bring the group up. So I make a scope adjustment and I write that in place for shot number seven. Shot number seven. I wasn't focused and I tried to force the shot. I yanked on the trigger causing the rifle to move downward. I called the shot below my target and low. The shot impacted low of my target. I also wrote a note to remind myself of what I did so I can deduct this when I analyze my data at a later date. Shot number eight. I called it at the 10 o'clock portion of my target and the round impacted at the 10 o'clock area of my intended target. Shot number nine. The shot broke high and I called it high, a miss. And that's where the round went exactly. This was due to the fact that I held my breath. I went ahead and annotated a note in the note box about my breathing. Shot number 10. I saw my crosshairs near the two o'clock area when the rifle went off and that's where the shot went. I made a note that my position didn't feel right. Shot number 11, I totally messed up and I was in a rush and bucked the round. I seen the crosshairs high and left and that's where the round impacted. I made a note once again in the notes section that I bucked the round. Shot number 12, I focused in on my fundamentals and I broke a perfect shot that I called center and that shot impacted almost dead center. At this point, I'm done shooting and I record the last known data on my rifle as my end fire data in which I can refer back to for my next range session. This information is written in the lower right hand portion in the end fire data section of your data book page. This information allows you a starting point at which you should start firing from the next time you are about to take a shot in conditions that are similar or in the same to what you just recorded for. This information is vital to help you increase your first round hit probability.
Having a working knowledge of the fundamentals of marksmanship will assist you in making a logical and proper analysis of your data book in your shooting session. There's a lot of information about marksmanship already available and it would take me a long time to go over marksmanship in this video. Some of the more important things that you as a shooter should focus in on and be sure that you understand will be the following. Natural point of aim, sight alignment, sight picture, breath control, bucking, jerking or slapping the trigger, flinching, scope shadow, and follow through. These fundamental errors will be more commonly found in your training session. What I'm going to do is use our data book page from our range session today to analyze my shooting session to highlight and show you a few things I would focus my training on for my next training session. Making sight adjustments. If you look at shots 1, 2, and 3, you will see that I established a group. Once you have fired 2 to 3 shots that you know broke clean and on your intended aiming point, it's time to make a sight adjustment from the center of that group to the estimated center of your target. You also see that this pattern repeats again with shots 4, 5, and 6. On shot 7, when I jerked the trigger, I knew what I did, but why did I do it? Did I just get anxious? What steps could I have taken longer on to give me a better opportunity to have made a better shot? Shot number 8. I called it high at 10 o'clock and that's where the round impacted. But we also see that shot 11 went further out and then I bucked that shot and annotated that in the notes section of my data book. That shot went further out at 10 o'clock as well. What I can take from this is I probably did the same thing on both of these shots and that I'm developing a tendency to rush or buck shots instead of taking my time to apply the proper fundamentals. In concluding, the last thing I can do is look and see where my last shot impacted my target, as well as look at where the largest shot group of shots that have impacted my target were. If you notice, there's still a group of shots that are a bit low and to the right. I can now make an adjustment on my end fire data and true up my scope data in order to get myself dialed in to the center of my target. The key to analyzing your data book is to be objective and start narrowing down and finding the shooter errors that you are making and use that to help modify your training as well as using the information you are recording to help you become more successful. This concludes the how to use a data book video. I hope that this video has helped you understand what you may need in your data book. You now know how to set up your data book for each range session. You should also understand how to properly call and plot your shots and properly analyze your book once you have completed your shooting session. If you have any further questions, you can contact us by email at info at impactdatabooks.com and we'll be more than happy to help you out. Impact Data Books looks forward to bringing you future training videos to help enhance your shooting. So while you are here, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as follow us on Facebook and Twitter in order to be kept up to date on all our newly released products and videos. Impact Data Book thanks you for allowing us to become the leader in modular data books. Happy shooting and keep impacting your targets.